Need space for your miniatures? This custom-built 8-shelf unit is made entirely from XPS foam and glue, weighs next to nothing, requires no special tools, and holds nearly 400 miniatures. And we show you how to make it today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about playing the ultimate game of D&D and other role-playing games. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and click a bell icon so you'll be informed when we upload new videos. So I'm currently renovating one of the rooms in my house and turning it into the new Dungeon Craft studio, thanks to the many patrons who have made that possible. And that means rethinking how I use space. This channel requires an enormous amount of miniatures and terrain to create the high quality scenes you see, and I'm constantly acquiring and painting new minis, so I need a lot of space in which to store them. But I needed to do it in a way that was much more efficient. And I looked into pre-made shells, but I found two problems with them. The first problem, was many of them had four inch deep shells. And that's not ideal for storing miniatures. I was looking for something that was two inches deep. And I did find two inch shells, but those had too much space between the shells, like four or five inches. And that's just a lot of wasted space. So I came to the conclusion I'd have to make my own. The problem is I'm not very good with woodworking and I don't have all the tools. So I started wondering, would it be possible to make a shelving unit entirely out of XPS foam? So I took a crack at it and the result is this. This 8-shelf unit is made entirely from XPS foam and glue. There are no nails of any kind used in it. Each shelf is 2 and 3 quarters inches high and a little more than 2 inches deep, so you can actually fit two miniatures back to back on each shelf, allowing you to pack more miniature in less space. And I'm going to show you how to make it today. And you want to stick around to the end of this video because that's where I reflect and talk about the mistakes I made and what I would do differently if I had to do it all again. So let's get to it. We're going to build our shelves out of Fomular XPS project panels. They are one inch thick and one will be the back. In the end, I only use two, so you only need to get two for this project. I just wanted to be sure I had enough material. The side panels will run the length of the unit and will be four inches thick. And I ended up slimming those to 3.5 inches, so you may as well start there. And the bottom and top shelves are cut flush to fit. That would be 2.5 inches. I carve a block pattern into the sides. The blocks are three quarters of an inch high and one inch long, so they're rectangular. I drew them with a Bic Atlantis 1.6 gel roller and carved out the sides with a styrofoam cutter to make them more pronounced, but it's not really necessary and I wouldn't do it again. It's actually too hard to get the paint between the cracks, so the pen is enough. I spaced the shelves at 2.5 inch intervals, enough height for most standard miniatures. The shelves are two and a quarter inches wide, enough to be two miniatures deep. Each shelf is a half inch thick, as I'll be using half inch XPS to create the shelves. This will save space and allow me to include one to two more shelves, although the one inch foam is perfectly good, it's probably gonna be more sturdy. I didn't glue the pieces together yet, I'm just showing what they're going to look like so you can kind of see where I'm going with it. I draw a brick pattern between the shells, all by hand. Green stuff rollers won't work because they don't leave a deep enough impression on the XPS. They will work on dollar store foam core, so you could cheat by rolling out the pattern into the foam core and gluing that to the XPS. But I drew each by hand. Each layer is a little less than a centimeter wide, and the key is to not let the mortar lines line up. Here the mortar lines were drawn with a ruler. These are the shells that are going to have the arches, and I wanted the a more of a brick-like pattern that'll be a contrast to the field stone pattern on the arches. I carve out the arches out of dollar store foam core using my ballpoint pen and cut them out with an X-Acto knife. I created the arches using this template, and I created the template by tracing the top of a water glass. And that just makes it easier to do a bunch of arches in a row. Once I'm done, I cut it out with an X-Acto knife, like so. Now people are gonna ask if green stuff rollers would work just as well. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do an experiment that you can see for yourself, because I have such a roller right here. Uh, this is a green stuff brick roller. So I will press it down as hard as I can and we'll see what happens. Ah, 
Obviously, the green stuff roller is much faster, but the impression it leaves is not as deep, and I really try to press as hard as I could, so it's really up to you. I glued them in place with a Leans felt and foam tacky glue. What's the difference between this and regular tacky glue? I don't know, about $3. The regular tacky glue is often on sale, whereas the foam tacky glue is like $4. But I decided to splurge. It worked really well, and when the bottoms popped up, I just pressed it into place. It was very sticky. You can see in this close-up how the different styles of blocks contrast with each other, and I'm gonna use those arches on every other level. That way it just breaks it up and adds visual interest so that none of the levels really look the same. I mix some Mod Podge with some black paint, and I'm going to paint the top level black. This is to add some variation, because instead of bricks, I'm going to be adding a grating. I'm gonna do this with the granny grating, it's called. You can get it in the yarn section of your hobby store. And I am going to lay the arches on top of it so they look like portcullises or sewer gratings. And I'm gonna glue them in place with DAP caulk, which is the cheapest adhesive I work with. It's like three or four dollars for this huge tube. I might have hot glued this section. If you're gonna use hot glue, this might have been the time to do it. But the advantage of DAP is you can still move it around and you're not gonna burn your fingers. So I like the DAP. And this is what it looks like when it's assembled. Again, I haven't glued it yet. I'm just showing so you know where it's going. The next step is to add texture by stamping everything with aluminum foil and coating everything with Mod Podge which I mix with black paint, and this will give it a good protective shell. After that, we paint it tan, and this is the part that really gets tough. I wanted to add some variation, so I added the colors honey brown, a terracotta, and a gray. Special thanks to my daughter and Mrs. Professor Dungeon Master for volunteering to paint every other brick some other color. So if you have a family, they, I'm sure, will enjoy it just as much as my family did and it will make the work move much faster. You could probably get it done in an hour. Once it's totally dry, I go back and dry brush it with Craft Smart Suede, and this will blend all the colors together. Once it is thoroughly dry, it's time to apply the black wash. This is my homemade black wash. I got the recipe from Black Magic Craft, and I will include a link below. It is made from water mixed with paint medium and black ink. You can also make wash with just black craft paint and watering it down at about a five to one ratio. The key is to get your wash to really look black. It, it generally, it's not gonna go too dark. I never find it, that's a real problem. When I'm done, I turn it up vertically so the excess paint runs off and I just set it aside to dry for a while. Even if it stains this way, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna look like it's water stains and it will look cool. Now we're gonna add a few more details. I've painted the gratings silver and also added some rust. And I'm gonna be adding some visual interest by using Citadel's Ethonian Camishade wash. I know that's out of focus, but uh, this is Ethonian Camishade and I'll show you what we do with it. Yeah. Well, I have a question, Dungeon Craft related. Yeah. Um, you know how I'm a moderator on the Discord server? Yeah. That means I have the power to do pretty much whatever I want. And I want to give myself the title, The Rat King, King of Rats. It's The Rat King, semicolon, The King of Rats, correct? Stop. Grammar time. It would be a colon. Would It would be a colon? The Rat King, King of Rats. That's, that's kind of redundant, no? What do you mean? Nah, I like it. I think it has a nice ring to it. It would be Rat King colon, I think. The Rat King. Semi semicolon you use in place of the word but or and. Can you put the word but or and in the sentence? So it would be a colon. The Rat King colon King of Rats. That's what I think. What does a colon mean in the sentence if a semicolon means but or and? It's like a subtitle. Alright. The King of Rats. Because I, I want it to be known that I am not the rat. I simply rule them. You let gravity do the work, and that will give it a, uh, a slimy kind of look and add some visual interest, especially to the sort of plain walls in between. Mm -hmm. 
Next day, we're going to glue the shells and we're going to be using Gorilla Glue. Special thanks to, again, Jeremy at Black Magic Craft for recommending this glue. So I watched his episode on how to glue styrofoam and he came to the conclusion that Gorilla Glue was one of the best. So I bought a very small bottle. We're, we're not even gonna use the whole thing, actually. And the way Gorilla Glue is applied is you apply it to one surface and kind of smear it with your figure. Here I'm using a, a glove. And then you wet the other side. And this forms a chemical reaction where it foams and it really turns rock hard. People have asked, are these shells really gonna support all these miniatures? Absolutely, it is really gonna be immobile, but you have to wet the one side. Here I'm tugging at the shells to show how sturdy they are. They are not going to bend, they are not going to move. Now for the floor, I kind of cheated. I got this Halloween Village cobblestone pattern because I was sick of drawing cobblestones and stones. So this is from a company called Village Accessories. Another way you could do it, if you do have green stuff rollers, you can always roll out on dollar store foam core. You can roll out if you have the cobblestone roller and just glue that to the surface. But I was just so tired that I just tacky glued this down. And yeah, I never want to really draw a stone block again. Finally, we put the sides on and I'm going to clamp them in place with some bricks just to make sure they don't move. And you can see Mrs. Professor Dungeon Master is here getting into the act and we're making sure everything lines up and it's flush and I let it dry overnight. Some of these shells come up a little short. You can apply more glue to that area and more water to that area because what that glue will do is swell up. It will foam up and it'll fill that gap. So it's a really versatile glue Perfect for people like me who major in literature as opposed to something practical like engineering. Quick tip, if the glue squeezes through the seams, you can always paint it green and turn it into green slime. For the final step, I'm going to seal it with Verathane triple thick spray satin clear polyurethane, but any brand of polyurethane will do. Make sure you stay six to 12 inches away so it doesn't pool and obscure your detail. And now our shelf is ready for the wall. Now for the fun part, the things I would do differently. If I had to do it all again, I probably wouldn't make the shelves out of half inch XPS. And it's not because I don't believe in the shelves integrity. I do, once you mix the water with the Gorilla Glue, it foams up and it makes a substance not unlike spray foam insulation. So it's rock hard and it won't come apart. It's really like one big chunk of foam at this point. I just think there's an easier way to do it. And I got this idea from Jim, the tabletop engineer and that is poplar planks. You can get these in the craft section of your local hardware store. You can cut them to fit and the advantage of this is it's thinner. So you could, if you had a Dremel tool or a styrofoam melting tool, you could just slot this in to the one inch XPS, which is cheaper than the half inch XPS and you would probably be able to fit more shelves in because this is a lot thinner. And it's also really easy to paint or stain black. This I had to Mod Podge and stuff. You wouldn't have to do it with this. And if you wanted to, for the floor, you could check out DM Scotty's Tilescapes. He shows you how to take dollar store foam core and make a cobblestone or a flagstone stamp. And you could just stamp the pattern on because you're not really gonna be seeing it. You really don't need 3D flagstone in a shelf. So that's an easier, cheaper way to do that. Another option is just to go on Etsy and buy one of these. This six shelf unit is made from pine and it's designed to hold Citadel paints, but it can also hold miniatures. So you can just take your foam core, draw out a dungeon pattern, paint the whole thing black, and then just slip that in there and you have an instant dungeon display case. It even fits larger miniatures like that owl bear as well. Now this isn't as deep as the shelves I made. It's about an inch and a half deep, which means it'll only fit one mini. But if you don't have as many minis as I do, then it should be perfect for you and it'll save you a lot of time. Now if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, you could put them below and you can always show off your version of this. I'm sure there's gonna be better ones on the Facebook group. Once again, thanks to all the patrons who made all my experimentation possible. And if you're interested in supporting 
us, you can check out those links to Patreon below there. There's tons of cool stuff on there. There's also t-shirts and stuff below, so you can check that out. Once again, for Dungeon Craft, I am Professor Dungeon Master. I'll see you soon. And until then, may all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. Click on these videos if you want more lessons from Conan the Grammarian. Only on Dungeon Craft. <laughs>